The Maltese Falcon was a 1931 black and white crime noir mystery starring Ricardo Cortez, B.B. Daniels, and Una Merkel. And I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, The Maltese Falcon? That didn't come out in 1931. It came out in 1941 and starred Humphrey Bogart. Well, apparently, and I never even knew about this, there was an earlier version of The Maltese Falcon. It came out 10 years before the Bogart version. I found out about this recently as I was just looking through some different actors I had seen in films recently, and I was surprised that this even existed in the first place. And it's really interesting, actually. I'm not going to compare the merits necessarily of why one is better than the other. I do have a preference. I'll get to that eventually, but I think both were fine movies. The first one from 1931 sort of like a slimmed-down version of the Humphrey Bogart version. And I'll get into the parallels, but it does feel like an abbreviation. Uh, it does seem to go a lot faster. Ricardo Cortez plays the lead character in this story. He's this Sam Spade detective who has an office in San Francisco with his partner, Miles Archer. So the two of them have their own office. They're detectives. This actor who plays the lead role, uh, Ricardo Cortez, he just wears this big, cheesy smile through the film, almost like he's not taking it seriously. And um, the story is basically B.B. Daniels is this actress. She shows up uh, to hire them to find her missing sister, who she thinks has run off with some guy named Thursby. And obviously there's more to her story, as is the case in detective stories, of course. And Sam Spade takes the case. His partner is later killed while tailing Thursby. And the interesting thing is Sam Spade doesn't really seem all that shaken up about it. And Thursby then dies, and the police suspect that possibly Spade killed this Thursby character in revenge for killing his partner. But they can't prove it, so they move on. So Sam Spade sees that there's more to B.B. Daniels' story and wants to get to the bottom of it. Uh, eventually, this Dr. Cairo shows up, played by Otto Madison, I think his name is. And, you know, he looks familiar as an actor, kind of like a, a sickly version of Edward Norton. So he gets there, and we basically, he's playing this Peter Lorre character from the Bogart version. So there's that to kind of keep a note of. And that was one of the things I noticed is the parallels. As I'm watching this one, I'd think, oh, he's so-and-so from the other version of Maltese Falcon. So you can kind of judge for yourself who does a particular role better. And we finally get into this detail as this Dr. Cairo guy comes into the picture. that He's looking for this elusive Maltese Falcon statue. So Spade starts questioning um, Wonderly about who Cairo was, and I'm getting all my names, I'm sure, mixed up. And I have to admit, I've seen this story a bunch of times. I still get it kind of mixed up of who's doing what. So Spade's asking, asking questions about, you know, who Cairo is. The police show up. There's more questions. Then this Dudley Diggs character shows up and invites Sam Spade to come and talk to him about the Blackbird. Over drinks and cigars, of course. And at this point, Dwight Fry shows up as his gunman. Uh, Dwight Fry, it was interesting to see him in this. He was otherwise known as Renfield uh, from the original Dracula movie. And he's in several other horror films as well. He's also Dr. Frankenstein's assistant. So, you know, he does a fine job here playing this gunman. And all of these characters have their interest in the Falcon. And Sam Spade just wants to get to the bottom of the mystery. And all the while, women all seem to fall in love with him and his cheesy smile. Honestly, I felt it was a little convoluted, but it all sort of comes together at the end. And, you know, I compare this to the Humphrey Bogart version. And both do have their merits. Both are entertaining. And, you know, I will say, you know, while Otto Madison does a fine job is playing this Dr. Cairo character, I probably would lean more towards the Peter Lorre uh, rendition. Because, you know, in the Bogart version, 
there's the scene where he loses it with the Dudley Diggs guy and he starts screaming the bit about, you fat, bloated idiot, you know, and he sounds it's just like something from Ren and Stimpy. You know, that's just the best. And possibly I'm leaning more towards a Bogart version featuring Elisha Cook Jr., uh, who plays a young thug here. But again, you know, I see him and I think of him as Ice Pick, the crime boss from Magnum P.I., and I just brought this up when I did the review of House on Haunted Hill, because Elisha Cook Jr. is in that as well. And it's one of those things, I, certain actors or actresses I associate with one particular role, and it's hard to see them as anything else but that role. And that's the case with Elisha Cook Jr. I mean, he does a fine job here as a thug. Um, Sidney Greenstreet was also in the Bogart version. He was in Casablanca, so there's that interesting Bogart connection. Uh, he plays the Casper Gutman character, who was the bad guy looking for the Maltese Falcon. So, honestly, Bogart's version probably had a few more familiar faces than the 1931 version did for me, but I still liked them both. And, uh, you know, this reminds me that I really do need to review the Bogart version. It's funny, I've actually seen his Maltese Falcon several times, and I've done about 57 reviews on this channel so far, and I have not talked about the Maltese Falcon, his version. <laughs> so I'm starting with the 1931 version, which is kind of weird. In thinking about it, I guess this, the Maltese Falcon back then was sort of like the Spider-Man of the day. So you have, you know, kind of the Bogart version, which would be sort of like the Tobey Maguire version, which arguably could be considered one of the best. But there are other versions of Spider-Man with other actors that are decent. And I think that's probably sort of the case here. You have the Maltese Falcon everybody knows and loves, which is the 1941 version. But it's good to be aware that there was, 10 years earlier, another telling of the same story by other actors who do a decent job. And I would say, just to kind of wrap things up, do yourself a favor, check out both of them as they're both very impressive versions of the Maltese Falcon story, and they both have you know, their own positives and their own merits. They're both good, and they're both worth checking out.